Good day. A couple of days ago, I did here on Locals a video discussing the very mysterious trip by the US CIA director, William Burns, in which he met with the Russian uh, head of Russia's National Security Council, Nikolai Petrushev. I pointed out that there was something very odd about this meeting, in particular the fact that the Russians did not disclose the location where this meeting took place and the fact that the Russian readout of this meeting was incredibly brief, saying no more than that the state of US Russian relations have been discussed. Reports which then appeared in the Russian media suggested that the meeting had taken place in New Delhi, which, by the way, would make a certain sort of sense. The Indians have been reaching out to the Russians recently, and it's known that the Indians are trying to set up a conference about Afghanistan in New Delhi, and Nikolai Petrushev is the specific official who has been invited by the Indians to attend it. So it would be logical for uh, Burns to meet with uh, Petrushev in New Delhi. And as I've said in, previous, in my previous program, the Indians anyway are known to be extremely concerned about the whole nature of Western policy towards Russia. They've repeatedly advised and warned the West ever since the start of the Ukrainian crisis in 2014 that all that Western policy towards Russia is doing is consolidating Russia's alliance or de facto alliance with China, which is making China stronger and putting India in an ever more precarious position. Anyway, it would have been logical to assume, therefore, that the meeting did take place in New Delhi, and that was what the Russian media has suggested. Well, we've now had more information about this meeting from the American side, and it's been beginning to look as if some of those New Delhi reports that were circulating in the Russian media were intentional disinformation. There is, I should say before I proceed further, something distinctly odd about this meeting. I get the impression that it was never intended to be made public. The Russians, for some reason, which I'm going to discuss further in a moment, decided to publicise the fact that it had taken place and that has pushed the United States into giving its own account of what actually happened. And the place where it has been discussed by the United States is an article in CNN. Now, I have to say straight away that I become extremely wary of anything that appears on CNN. CNN played an astonishing and, in my opinion, utterly uh, disgraceful role in stirring up the whole Russiagate affair. But it's also become increasingly clear that CNN has very close links and connections with the US intelligence community. Anyway, the article in CNN, like I have to say many articles in CNN, <coughs> gives the impression of being well informed but as i said we need to take anything that cnn publishes on these sort of matters with a gigantic pinch of salt anyway the article confirms that the meeting did take place and it says that the meeting took place in moscow not in new delhi at all and it also says that um, burns visited moscow on Joe Biden's direct instructions, and it seems that he came with a large number of aides with him to meet with Russian officials. We've also learned from other sources that the meeting, that the meetings, uh, that the visit, uh, Burns's visit to Moscow, continued for two days. That he was for two days in the Russian capital and that over the course of this visit, he met not just with Petrushev, but with Narishkin, Sergei Narishkin, who is the, the, equivalent, uh, the head of the SVR, Russia's 
Foreign Intelligence Service, the body that most cl closely corresponds to the CIA within the Russian intelligence community. So this was a big, long visit. And CNN wants us to believe or says that this meeting was primarily about Ukraine. And this is what CNN says. I'm going to read it in full. As I said, uh, I always take what CNN says about all of these subjects with a heavy pinch of salt. President Joe Biden dispatched CIA director Bill Burns to Moscow earlier this week to warn the Kremlin that the US is watching its build-up of troops near Ukraine's border closely and to attempt to determine what is motivating Russia's actions. The rare trip by Burns to Russia, where he held talks with senior Kremlin security officials directly involved in the military activity, came as the US has grown increasingly concerned by Russia's irregular movement of troops and equipment near Ukraine's northern border, according to multiple US and Ukrainian sources briefed on the meeting. The Biden administration has ramped up F its efforts in recent days to e de-escalate growing tensions between Moscow and Kiev. Following his meetings in Russia, Burns spoke to U Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky by phone in an attempt to defuse those tensions, the sources told CNN. A senior State Department official was also dispatched to Kiev on Thursday to support those efforts. The flurry of high-level diplomacy underscores how seriously the Biden administration is taking the latest Russian troop movements, even after an earlier build-up in the spring ultimately did not lead to a renewed invasion. Tensions between Ukraine and Russia have also been exacerbated in recent weeks by a deepening Ukrainian energy crisis that Kiev believes Moscow has purposefully provoked. The build-up coupled with the energy blackmail does suggest a more aggressive Russian posture, an advisor to, uh, to Zelensky told CNN. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby said on fr Friday that the scale and the size of the units that we are seeing from Russia is unusual. We continue to monitor this closely and as I said before, any escalatory or, escalatory or aggressive actions by Russia would be of grave concern to the United States. Assessments on Russia's motives differ widely within the administration, with some sources telling CNN they believe Russia could be preparing for an invasion, whilst others suggest they are conducting an exercise or simply trying to intimidate Ukraine. And publicly, Ukraine has downplayed the idea that Russia is building up its military presence near the border beyond normal levels. Russia has established a practice of transferring and accumulating military units for the purpose of maintaining tension in the region and political t pressure on neighbouring countries, Ukraine's defence ministry said on Tuesday. But in an effort to prevent any kind of escalation, Biden dispatched Burns to Moscow on Tuesday, where he met with Kremlin officials to try to deter any plans for an invasion by conveying that the US is closely monitoring the troop movements, according to people briefed on their meeting. Burns also brought up concerns that Russia is close to using its gas exports as leverage with Ukraine and other net European nations forecast to suffer energy crises heading up into winter. After his meetings in Moscow, Burns called Zelensky on Wednesday to convey the administration's concerns over Russia behavior and reassure him that the US is closely tracking the Russian activity according to a person directly with direct knowledge of the call. 
Satellite images taken by Maxar Technologies on Monday demonstrate the kind of irregular Russian troops, troop and equipment movements that US officials are worry, worried about. The images show Russian troops, tanks and artillery massing near the Russian town of Yelnia and the Biden administration is more concerned than it was in the spring that Russia could launch an invasion to senior officials, US officials, said. In response to questions about the satellite images, Putin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters this week that the movement of our military equipment or army units across our, the territory of the Russian Federation is exclusively our business. Russia has never threatened anyone, is not threatening and does not pose a danger to anyone. But against the background of rather aggressive expansionist tendencies, especially on the part of NATO and other countries, Russia has always taken measures to ensure Ensure its security and will continue to do so. But one US official told CNN that the US has serious concerns about the Russian build up, adding it would be foolish for us not to be considering the possibility of an invasion or incursion. Another State Department official and a senior, senior congressional aide noted that the US concerns stem largely from the fact that Russia appears to be putting pieces into place should it want to take action against Ukraine quickly. It is certainly an unprecedented build-up, and if Russia wanted to invade Ukraine, it has the capability and capacity to overwhelm Ukrainian forces, the, the aide said. With such a large build-up, Putin could order an invasion at any time and there would be very little warning. European diplomats in the US and Europe say the US has been conducting intense outreach about Russia in an effort that began just in just the last few days. The administration is very, very concerned. This is the most concerned I've heard them about Russia in a really, really long time, said one diplomat. I wouldn't underestimate this. They're doing a massive outreach to raise awareness about this. This concern, the concerns the US is sharing are pretty specific, said another diplomat, who echoed others in saying that they're now being carefully and closely examined in European capitals, where perceptions of the Russian threat vary. Even so, diplomats of five different European countries have acknowledged that the trend line of Russian actions in relation to Ukraine are worry, have been worrying. And then there's um, a great deal about speculation about Russian intentions and much more of the same. Now, what are we to make of all of this? The first is to say that I do have some serious doubts about this story. If Biden wants to know why the Russians are mobilizing troops close to Ukraine, and we'll come to whether they really are mobilizing troops close to Ukraine in a moment, when, well, one would have thought that the obvious thing for Biden to do is to pick up the telephone and talk to President Putin, to Vladimir Putin, and to ask him what is going on. After all, Biden did exactly that in April when there was that previous build-up of Russian troops or rather that actual build-up of Russian, Russian troops and they did have a constructive discussion and that did indeed ease the tension in the way that this CNN article says the uh, Russians, uh, uh, the, the, the administration rather, wants to achieve. Alternatively, since we're talking about a troop build-up, why send the director of the CIA, of all people, to Moscow to talk about it? Surely the more obvious person to talk to Russian officials about military matters is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. General Milley is known to have at least a working relationship with General Gerasimov, who is the head of the Russian, the chief of the Russian general staff, 
And the logical thing would be to, for Millie to pick up the telephone and to ask Gerasimov, we've seen all the evidence of these troop movements, what exactly is going on? Uh, I would add that Millie and Gerasimov actually had a meeting a few weeks ago in Helsinki and apparently they had a fairly cordial discussion there about all sorts of topics and if you're going to send somebody a top level official to meet with other top level officials Russian top level officials and discuss troop movements with them well why send the CIA director instead of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff why not have a discussion between the militaries that would seem on the face of it far more logical then also there's this curious fact not mentioned by the way in the CNN article that Burns didn't just meet with with uh, Petrushev who is admittedly a person in overall charge of security policy in Russia but hardly the key decision maker here but also with Nerishkin, who, as I said, is his counterpart as head of the Russian intelligence community. If this is all about intelligence, you know, about a military, military movements, surely you talk to military people rather than to intelligence officials. And I would add, again, that the Russian readout, that it was US-Russia relations that were discussed, doesn't seem to refer to Ukraine at all, at least not in that way. And that, again, begs some questions about whether, in fact, um, Burns's trip to Moscow was indeed solely or even primarily about this troop build-up. Then again, let's actually discuss this build-up. Let's discuss what's actually going on, because it seems to me there's been some great deal of misunderstanding on this issue. I've actually done a programme recently, which you can find both here on Locals and on YouTube, in which I discussed these tr Russian troop movements. And I've said that, in fact, those troop movements do not bring the Russian troops close to the Russian border. Yulnia, which is the place where these Russian troops... Yelnia, sorry, where these Russian troops are located is not, in fact, on the Ukrainian border. It is actually located some distance from the Ukrainian border. But it is a possible rear base area from which Russian troops could be deployed quickly and in large numbers in the event that there is a crisis in Ukraine. Now, um, this is undoubtedly the case and it is in effect positioning of forces in a way that would actually uh, make it possible for the Russians to deploy forces quickly. In that video which I did just a few days ago, just two, two or three days ago, I actually said that it looked like a movement of pieces on the chessboard in preparation for a big move if one needed to be made. And it's quite striking to see that a congressional aide appears to have told CNN the same thing. Russia appears to be putting pieces into place should it want to take action against Ukraine quickly. It is certainly an unprecedented build-up, and if Russia wanted to invade Ukraine, it has the capability and capacity to overwhelm Ukrainian forces. With such a large build-up, Putin could order an invasion at any time and there would be very little warning. I also said that because of the deteriorating situation in Ukraine, I said this in that previous video, it seemed to me that the situation is actually more tense than it was in the spring, that it's quite possible that with a festering political and economic crisis in Ukraine, the possibility of the Ukrainians doing something reckless, like going for broke by starting a war in eastern Ukraine, was arguably greater than it was in the spring, and in that case there would be a Russian reaction. 
Now, the, Russia, the United States knows all of that. It knows all about all of that. And that perhaps brings us to some of the reasons why Burns actually may have gone to Moscow. Because consider the early part of this CNN article. And it's interesting how the article shifts because it says that after the meetings in Moscow, Burns called Zelensky in order to, and it says, that these are the words I find in the article, to de-escalate growing tensions between Moscow and Kiev. Burns spoke to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky by phone in an attempt to defuse those tensions. Another senior State Department official was also dispatched to Kiev on Thursday to support those efforts. Now, that appears to suggest U.S. pressure on Kiev, on Zelensky. The Burns goes to Moscow. He meets with the Russian officials. He then calls Zelensky. The purpose of the, the, purpose of the call is to de-escalate tensions. So basically he's telling Zelensky to de-escalate. And a State Department official is dispatched to Kiev to support these efforts, which is to say he too went to Kiev, whoever he or she is, in order to get the Ukrainians to defuse tensions and to de-escalate. And then somebody seems to have had second doubts about this. It looks as if that's wavering in support for Ukraine. And we read elsewhere in the article lower down that the United States, that Burns actually called Zelensky to express support for Ukraine. So it's all shifted. The whole thing has shifted. And then we have all this very strange discussion about energy. And why would the CIA director want to talk about energy issues with Russia? Now, the CNN article is incredibly ambiguous about all of this. It's not at all clear what exactly is going on, because at various points in the article, when there's talk about an energy crisis, it appears to be the it, the issue appears to be uh, the fact that there is an energy crisis in Europe. But if you actually read the article carefully, it's quite clear that the issue is the energy crisis in Ukraine itself, which, as I said, is exacerba exacerbating the situation there. Now, I'm going to make some speculations. I think Burns did go to Moscow. I think that's absolutely clear. I'm certain that he didn't go to New Delhi. I'm not quite sure why the Russians pretended that the meeting was in New Delhi when it was actually in Moscow, but he clearly did come to Moscow. And clearly one major concern was the deteriorating situation in Ukraine. I'm sure that the Biden administration is extremely concerned about the situation in Ukraine. They know that if there is a war, were a war in eastern Ukraine, if Zelensky were to launch an attack on the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, the Russians now have the troops in place. They could intervene quickly. The Ukrainians would be overwhelmed. There would be a total debacle. And I am sure that the Russian, that the Americans are also getting the same information that I'm getting information that's been reaching them from people like Anatole Levin, who met with Russian officials in Valdai, the Valdai conference, the recent Valdai conference, that if there was a Russian intervention in Ukraine, the Russians would not stop at the boundaries of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. They would have every reason to go further. They might stop at the regional borders of the Donetsk and Lugansk regions, or they might press for on further still. They might, in effect, occupy the entire Russian-speaking coast of Ukraine, taking in cities like Nikolaev, Kherson, and Odessa, and perhaps also the important cities of Kharkov, 
um, further north, in effect splitting these all away from Ukraine and conceivably integrating them into Russia. Were that to happen, it would of course be an absolute disaster for the United States. The United States does not want to see uh, um, a gas war at the present time with raging inflation across the world. And in light of all of that, and very probably, it's completely understandable that the administration should be extremely concerned that they should send uh, Burns to Moscow to discuss these issues and that they should be trying to calm things down with the Ukrainians also and telling the Ukrainians, for heaven's sake, don't launch that attack on eastern Ukraine that you might be contemplating. The Russians might respond. If they do, we will have a disaster on our hands and there's actually, in practical terms, very little we can realistically do to help you in that kind of situation. So it's possible that something like that did actually take place and, in fact, it's highly likely that it did. It would make complete sense if it did. But we come back now to the Russian side. Why, if all these private secret discussions were taking place, did the Russians decide to leak out the fact that this meeting between Narishkin and um, Burns took place? And why did they publish that incredibly terse one-line reader? Well, I'm sure that the meeting went beyond the situation in Ukraine. The Russians will have certainly listened to all that Burns had to say about Ukraine. I'm pretty sure they will have made their position to Burns absolutely clear. We saw some sense from that, from the words by Dmitry Peskov about threats to Russia, which are provoking Russian actions, which appear in that CNN article. I'm sure the Russians made it fairly clear that they would be prepared to take action to uh, stop the situation in Ukraine escalating. Whether they're prepared to listen to any suggestions about sending gas to Ukraine, if that's what Burns was suggesting, I don't know. But I am sure that the Russians will have, as they always do, placed the whole situation in Ukraine within the context of the overall relationship at the moment between, the, between Russia and the West. And they will have pointed out to the United States, to the officials in the United States, that the situation is in fact deteriorating steadily and that this is largely the result of US actions. Well, they were also, I am sure, and I am sure that this topic did come up, there will also have been some discussions about the latest moves by China and about the growing relationship between China and Russia. Anyway, there it is. We now have an account about the situation between uh, Burns and the Russians. Uh, the Americans tell us it was primarily about uh, Ukraine. And it does indeed appear as if the situation there is indeed deteriorating. Whether tensions really have been diffused, who can say? But the CNN situation suggests that there is something perhaps somewhat akin to a mood of panic beginning to take hold in Washington, or at least at some levels within the United States about this issue. Anyway, we will see where all this leads. We will see what further discussion, what, what further things happen. I will certainly be keeping a close watch on this. And it's been interesting to know that this uh, meeting between Burns and, um, Narish, uh, and um, Petrushev really did take place. And that this secret meeting was, a, at least in part, about the deteriorating situation over Ukraine. Well, thanks for joining me again. More from me soon. Remember to go to our shop, buy the things there. Remember also to uh, uh, support us via Patreon and Subscribestar. 
And of course, those of you who are watching this program on Locals, thank you for doing so. Anyone else on other programs, on other platforms, you're welcome to also. Thank you for joining me again today. More from me soon.